Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I brought two meditation books with me today. Um, I brought The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty, um, which is a sister book to Codependent No More, which you guys know I love that book. Um, and then I also brought the Melody Beatty Journey to the Heart. And I actually, out of the two of them, I think this has become my favorite. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the magic book today because I'm trying to talk about it like every other day, every third day. But are you guys keeping up with it? Are you making your gratitude lists every single day? I'm loving the book. It is like profoundly changing me this month. Um, I woke up this morning and I practiced again the morning gratitude. I said I wasn't going to talk about it. I said I wasn't going to talk about it. I talked. To, I did the morning, um, the morning at a gratitude or morning magic. I think it was called from yesterday, where you put one foot on the ground and you say thank, and then you put the next foot on the ground and you say you, and you thank you know your higher power or the universe or whatever for, you know, plumbing and water and your life. And I woke up this morning and I was like, you know, thank you so much for my life and my sobriety and water and my condo that I live in with my husband and my husband and my dogs and this bed and everything. I just went on and on and on. And so for like the first 20 minutes, it's what I did. And um, I did that yesterday as well. And it's kind of like in my head I'm doing it, but it's, you know, really, um, as I work throughout the day, it gets me started on setting a foundation um, for being grateful for so much that happens throughout the day. So I think it's a fantastic, fantastic exercise. All right, let's get into today's meditation. I actually have um, two that I have picked, and they're both, well, I have one from this book, and it is called Wants and Needs, and I have two from the Journey to the Heart. So I'm going to read um, the first one from today, or from yesterday, uh, Journey to the Heart, because I didn't read from that yesterday. So let's get into this. November 19th, Awaken to the Storyteller Within. And, and I thought this would be an interesting um, meditation to read because you guys know I really believe that everybody has a story and um, we should all share our stories, whatever that story is. November 19th, Awaken to the Storyteller Within. Each of us has a story to tell, a story to share with the world. Artists and writers are in the storytelling business. Others have different ways of telling and sharing their stories. The tackle shop owner sells baits, hooks, and sinkers and tells people where to fish and about the big one that got away. The master carpenter tells his story by carving and hanging a wooden door so well crafted that it swings shut gently on its own. The quilter tells her story by commemorating important moments from her life in quilts that are colorful works of art. Each of us has a story to tell and our own way of sharing it with the world. It comes out through our words, through our work, and through the simple actions of our daily life. Listen to the stories of the people around you. Listen with your soul. Learn to value without judging and listen with an open heart to the beauty of each story and the importance of the storyteller. Learn to value and appreciate the story you are living now. Awaken to the storyteller within and share your story with the world. Tell it with joy and flair. Commit to telling it with love and passion. Tell it through living your life fully, doing your work well, and creating the best life you can. Be who you are, be too much, and love being that. Live your life from your heart, share from your heart, and your story will touch and heal people's souls. I love, love, love this meditation so much. I think it's so profound. And um, I am such a believer that we each have a story to tell, you know? And I, and I think it's, you know, important that it addresses that we don't just all tell our stories with words. We don't just all tell our stories by, hey, I have a story to tell you, or hey, listen to whatever I've gone through. And I think if you've watched my videos for a long time, you know that um, one of my major stories is talking about addiction and recovery because I feel so passionate about it because it's, you know, the biggest thing in my life. I wouldn't have anything else in my life if it wasn't for my sobriety. But, you know, also a story of mine is, you know, having grown up um, and then coming out and being gay, being a proud gay married man mid living in the Midwest. That's an, definitely another, you know, story of mine. I have many, many stories, stories of grief, you know, I'm having lost a mother and an aunt and an uncle and many, many friends. I think we all have stories. But I think the one thing that's so um, cool about this is that it doesn't just talk about telling your stories with words or writing them down and, you know, reading them in blogs, essays, or books, but it also talks about that people can tell stories through quilting or, you know, crocheting, like my friend Mel loves to crochet, or you can tell a story. Um, you know, it's interesting I use that as an example because she made me um, a little miniature Pee Pee the Flying Chihuahua and she put wings on him like an angel. 
and told a story through that, you know, and I think that's just awesome. And, um, you know, other people tell stories through painting or what singing or music or song lyrics. Some people tell, you know, we're still tell stories through dancing or, you know, just laughing with their friends or cooking, you know, or, uh, collaging or I don't know, whatever it is that really makes your heart beat, you know, and maybe it doesn't have to be something that you're creating. I've heard my story in many other people's songs, dances, and their written word as well, you know? So I think it's about really recognizing that we each have a story, we each have a soul, we each have a journey, and that my journey is going to be different and unique to somebody else's. I think that's really important to know. Um, you know, I have a friend of mine that told me years ago, you know, you always lose by comparison because for much of my life, I was constantly comparing myself to other people and why don't I have this and why don't I have that and why did they have it easier than me and why this? And it was always me in comparison to somebody else. And it really, it, this is going to sound strange, but it took me going to my high school reunion, you know, my 20 year high school reunion, not my 10, but my 20 where everybody was like, oh, you, you, this is cool about you and you, this is cool and whatever. And everybody was so nice. And I really realized, you know, like it wasn't that they had a better life than me or I had a cooler life than them or I was doing different. We all are on our own spiritual, unique living journeys. And a spiritual journey can just be of your soul, right? So everything about us, from what music we like to our favorite color to our favorite food to, you know, all of that, like, makes up our story of who we are. And I've always said that nobody's story is more important than somebody else's, you know? It's like, maybe your story is that you're a greeter at Walmart. That's a, that's a powerful story. You probably see a lot, you know? And your job is making people happy when they come through the door and greeting them, you know? in a nice way. There's a lot of people whose stories are different than ours and that doesn't mean that their story is any less important than mine or, you know, whatever. A couple years ago, I was going to start this channel um, and I actually did start the channel. It was called The Storytellers and um, I ended up not following through with it because it just was not a great time and I was going through a lot of changes and a lot of learning experiences at that point in my life as well and I had a lot of growth I needed to do. There was just a bug that just flew straight up. Uh, that's what happens when it's 30 degrees in Indiana one day and 70 the next. But I had a lot of learning I needed to go through at that point, you know, and I had a lot of things that I needed to work on on myself. And, um, you know, and I said, I, at that point, I decided I was going to dedicate that time to working on myself instead of starting a new channel. And um, I was working on my story, you know, and who I wanted to be going forward. And to do that, I had to look at the stories of my past, the stories of my present, and the stories of my future. And I think it's important that we do that, you know, and we continue to grow as human beings. But I always thought that that would be an interesting channel. I wanted to like have different people tell their stories from all over the world, you know, and, um, and, and, you know, maybe someday I'll do that and I'll on my 18th channel or something. But, you know, for now, I decided that's not the case. But I, I, why it intrigued me was because, you know, I love to read. I love to watch documentaries about people and I love to hear people's different stories. You know, I love to read about different characters and their backgrounds. And I'm really somebody, if you watch my booktube channel, um, so I have a booktube channel called Peter Likes Books, which is about, you know, um, everything to do with books, reading, reviews, all that kind of stuff, haul, book hauls. And I always talk in there that I like more character driven books and I like pot, plot driven books because character driven books to me are more interesting because you get to learn about people, right? And, um, like I'm currently reading this series, which if you watch my vlog, you know you've heard a lot about, or my booktube channel. Um, it's the Misfortune series by Jana DeLeon. And um, the main characters are this assassin that has been hidden out in this small town and these two old ladies that she befriends. And I just like, her name is Fortune and the two ladies are Ida Bell and Gertie. And I'm obsessed with them because I've gotten to know them almost like friends, you know? And they have very unique stories um, that they tell in the book. And as being very, very strong women, and, and of course, those are fictional characters, but then, you know, there are real people out there every day that have very, very real stories that are impacting the world, you know? And I think we've gotten to the point where we ask people questions like, what do you do for a living? And we think that that means something, you know, or, you know, just what kind of car do you drive or whatever? Those things don't mean anything. You know, that's where we need to be getting really to the, the nitty gritty of asking people really about what makes their soul, you know, dance? What, what really makes them think and what are they passionate about? You know, if you ask somebody, what are you passionate about? You're gonna get a completely different point of view from them, a different perspective than if you ask them, what kind of car do you drive? <laughs> do you know what I mean? What do you do for a living? You know, what kind of job do you have? What pays your bills? You know, it's completely different than what are you passionate about? And I think that's a good question for us to ask ourselves. What are we passionate about? Because if you ask yourself what you're passionate about, 
you'll probably find your story. So anyway, let me know what your story is in the comment section below. I really like that meditation. It was a, that was a positive, upbeat meditation today. I think we needed that. So anyway, um, I will be back tomorrow. I'll probably talk a little bit more about the magic book tomorrow. I can't believe we are almost like halfway through the book already. It's crazy, isn't it? I think we'll hit the halfway mark. What, today's uh, 12, 13, th it's th Sunday? Sunday or Monday, we'll hit that halfway mark in the book. Isn't that crazy? So anyway, let me know if you're participating in the magic book as well by Rhonda Byrne. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.